Alrighty, here's another nickel iron battery tutorial. We've made the uh, black iron oxide for the negative. Now we need to make some uh, active metal, active nickel metal uh, hydride for the uh, the positive terminal. So here's how we're going to do that. We're going to make it out of uh, nickel metal. <clears throat> There's easier ways, but I just happen to have nickel metal right now. And what I got here, I got a two liter bottle and a, a double boiler in a crock pot, a slow cooker. And it's only half full because you don't want to fill it up because once the reaction starts, the, uh, the solution, the acid, and the nickel starts foaming. And, but this is a bottle. If you look at the top really close, it's got a two foot glass tube in it that goes to a vent outside. The glass tube is what's called an air condenser. And what we want to do is reflux this acid and this water on this metal here for 96 hours. So, and you don't want to be opening up a bottle of hot acid and metal boiling because the simple reason is it's just toxic. So here's how here's how, here's how we go now. Here's the uh, metal and the acid. Of course, it turns green instantly; it dissolves a little bit of it. And uh, here it is at 150 degrees. If you see that or not, but anyway, it starts fizzing pretty good at 150. Okay, here's at about 90 hours. It's just about worked out. I don't raise the temperature to 180 degrees to finish the reaction off and, and to uh, neutralize the rest of the acid. I put in one liter of hydrochloric acid, 31.45%, and one full pound of nickel metal pieces. It will only dissolve 230 grams in, in a thousand uh, in, in a liter of acid, but the, it goes much, much quicker and it neutralizes the acid. It just wears the acid out when you open it up. It doesn't even have a smell hardly after it's cooled off. Now you don't want to dump this. When this is all worked out, you want to dump this in this equal volume of distilled water. Because if you let it cool off, it's going to turn into crystals. And besides being hard to get out of the jar, it's probably going to burst the jar. The crystals will grow so fast and so large that I don't have them to bust one container when I let it cool off overnight. So go ahead and dump it in this, uh, twice this volume of water. Uh, you need that anyway for a reason. Because when you make the nickel hydrate, it's so thick it'll turn into a log. So you want to do that. Anyway, that's that's here or there. I hope we don't need that. Okay, here's a here's a three liter jar completely full of uh, nickel hydrate. And, and when you make this, you get uh, with the molar ratio you'll get when you, you put a metal hydroxide in there to, to react with the nickel chloride <coughs> to make the hydrate. So then you wind up with the nickel hydrate, a monohydrate. For every mole of that, you get two moles of sodium chloride that you have to wash out. Nickel uh, hydrate is not real soluble at all. The salt is cold water or hot water. Cold water works just as fine because uh, sodium chloride is not very much more soluble in hot water than it is cold. Uh, the chemicals do differently. The salt's just different. If it did, the ocean, every time the ocean would get cold, you'd have mountains of salt in it. Okay, here's what it looks like what's in the bucket. You want to pour that into about three times this volume of water. And what that is going to do is dissolve the salt. You need to wash this about eight times. This stuff is real heavy. It has a specific gravity about four and a half times out of water. And if you notice, the liquid is clear. If you didn't get enough uh, metal hydroxide in there to convert it all the nickel chloride, the nickel chloride is really dark green. And the water would be green at the top. That means you need to add more hydroxide to finish the reaction, or you're just wasting your time and money. All right, I made this little siphon. My beer making days, um, I used to make these things a little larger. This is like a quarter inch glass tubing. I just heat it up and formed it into a little siphon. When you go to pull the water off the top of the uh, stuff, I use a siphon and I don't don't use your mouth on it. This stuff's toxic. You use about a four foot piece of tubing on the end of the glass or plastic. Just curve a piece of uh, plastic and put a couple rubber bands on it. That'll work fine too. And cause this uh, uh, suction on it, a siphon, put it and stick about one half of the bottom of this into the actual settled material. And this will uh, actually pull the vortex from the top, not the bottom. If you use a straight piece of tubing, it's going to cause the vortex to suck your material out with the water. This will this will, this will stop that. Okay, I got four filter funnels running. I tried a Bachner filter funnel with a vacuum aspirator. This stuff is so fine and so hard to deal with that it just stops it up instantly. So I just let gravity do it. Now you want to pour distilled water. I got a little squirt bottle. Squirt distilled water on this seven or eight times to make sure all the salt and everything else is out of it. 
and here's how it is looks when it's drying out I got a, I'll have about a dozen of these sheets here I made a whole kilogram I made a couple ounces last time and it was just not enough and don't let this stuff dry out thoroughly but what I do is I take it and let it dry to a consistency of twice the consistency of peanut butter then I scoop it up and put it in an airtight jar and the part I want to use, what I do is I let the, the, the peanut butter consistency, I'll take it out of the jar and I run it through this little uh, plastic, large mesh plastic sieve here and make these little uh, long, elongated pellets. That way when they dry, they're hard and uh, they're odd shapes so they don't pack very tight. It's what you want. I'll spray them with a special adhesive I have, some organic adhesive that's uh, very water soluble. So you spray these and you uh, shake them around in conductive nickel plated carbon carbon flake or carbon powder, I mean graphite powder, whatever you got, or nickel powder to make them conductive. And that way when you pack them all in, they're conductive. And when you wash them out, the uh, the little adhesive stuff washes out and leaves little microscopic channels all around the particles and around the carbon so that the uh, gases can get out when it's charging. And also it lets the uh, electrolyte flow through the mass. And that's what it looks like when it's pushed through the sieve here. It makes this little elongated pellets. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial. This is a disclaimer. Be careful. I'm not recommending anybody do this. Boiling acid metal is toxic. I've always done this outside, but the weather's been really bad here, so I made a rig inside this safe. You know, a lab rig that vents outside, and uh, I'm used to doing stuff like this, so please be careful. And you can also do this with uh, nickel carbonate, like I stated earlier, or, or green nickel oxide, which I just ordered some up to make some more out of. I'm burning all my nickel up using my, my plate machine. But anyway, that's it for this time. So we got two components for the battery. The rest of it's just as far as mechanical connections and using some smart ideas to make it work good. You guys be cool, and uh, I'll do another one when I get this new. I'm doing a new style battery this time. I'm doing one like a cylinder, uh, a much larger, about ten times larger than my little pickle jar battery I made, which is still working great. I tried to kill it. I froze it shorted it up, froze it 20 degree weather, it's still, it made it work better, it's 14% more capacity after I try to run it, and it's still working like a top, but anyway, we'll see you.